Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Today, I want to explore a bit more about some of the corporate lies, particularly in the uh, Admiralty and Maritime Law. You know that on this channel we've been exploring legal and lawful and things like that, big deceptions, those sort of things. Well, an opportunity to talk to a gentleman who has been exploring this sort of area for something like 30 years has come to me. The name has been given to me a few times and I wasn't quite sure who he was with quite big claims attached. And yet I've just spoken to him and he seems an incredibly humble, humble and likeable gentleman. His name is Russell-J Colon Gould. He is the quantum, and I'm going to get this right, quantum grammar co-creator and postmaster general of the world. Apparently, he's captured the American flag, and he joins me now. Russell, can I call you Russell? Yes, yes. It's an honor to be here, Richard. Um, I've watched your Last Man Standing documentary, in which you explain um, a lot about what's happened to you over the last 30 years and some of the things that you have been doing. You've been on an amazing roller coaster, and you've achieved some wonderful things, and yet... On the one hand, I was kind of expecting somebody all quite sort of, you know, stiff, pompous and all of that. And and here you are, a lovely man who I'm very thrilled to be talking to from the heart. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, accountability in the quantum system that has been created for the world is about self-governance. Mm -hmm. And it comes from within. And the neutrality and the, the kindness that we share to our fellow mankind is a different storyline than the division and the hatred and the corporate lies that have slipped into our lives. So I, I hope that the world sees uh, what I've done and take it serious on the grammar and how to be accountable with that and to learn how to govern themselves. And, you know, there's nothing really out there except for what you deal with with yourself and to learn how to be content with this with the space in your heart and your mind and to uh, not be influenced by the outside world which is a very difficult thing to do these days well absolutely with so much going on and so much news coming down the uh, down the channels although i try not to watch all the the fake lies on mainstream media to be honest with you um now a lot of this comes i mean as i say on my channel here we are in britain that, that it's turned into corporate britain everything is about trying to extract money from you it's taking your energy away and we get getting tied up in the courts with very strange uh, things and you realize that this all comes down and this is quite incredible i think when you look at it the simplicity really of grammar who would have thought that so much could be tied up with with the way you write things on paper? Yes, yes. You know, the corporate lies have been going on for quite some time. They've started with, our, of course, our kings, our feudalistic systems of, of czars and empires and dynasties and, the, and how that capture of this feudalistic system would capture lands and capture people and then put their their concepts into their into their theaters such as taxes and tenants and, and and really set up this this snowball of control. Mm. And and the people of the world, you know, because they used a, a concept of feudalism, which means might made right, right? It didn't have a concept of fairness or closure. And then when you look at closure, you look at having full closure of words, you know, because these words have meanings and so yeah. what i created was a placing the words in a now space condition and i was working with uh an ex-business partner of mine who died in 2018 david hyphen win colin miller and he developed the prepositional phrases and what i developed is the the quantum of the now space tying it all into the now space and we we formed a partnership uh, way back in uh, 1998 and so it was i was working with him since 1995 so it was it was quite a journey to to get to this to this space with him and uh you know i did i chose made choices not to contract with the people that he was under contract with to correct to be with and right. he, he he had a vision of his job was to educate the top one percent of the one percent of the world and you know and he succeeded in that concept but in that he lost control of that which he was a part of in 2006 
And so anything after that that he was doing was just kind of nefarious to divide the people and, and confuse people. And we see a, a pretty good job of that worldwide where people are using the quantum grammar technologies and they're not quant comprehending that quantum and quantum tanglements of the now space are you have to be careful what you say and what you do because if you if you call yourself like a coroner or something like that then you're bringing in death and we're, the quantum system is about life and about being fruitful and being neutral and being peaceful so the the which is opposite of the feudalistic system that was set up contrary to um, peace and neutrality, but more into might make right in these maritime contracts, such as our, you know, our birth certificates and our all these usuries that we have entangled ourselves into um, to to participate with to, you know, go buy groceries or go to school or go to the doctor's office or get utilities. All these things were in the shipping containment uh, to to control our navigation where we could go who's who said we could get through a certain place like a port or an mm -hmm. entry and what with the grammar what i didn't mean to do and what was done was when you disqualify all treaties and trusts on planet earth with the grammar because all the grammar was written in future tense and past tense and you bring it into the now space when the when the bad guys got that technology they then now can now open it up to call everything borderless use the grammar against the people. And the, and I, I told David, I says, you know, a very dangerous thing happens when you give nefarious families and nefarious people technology because they're going to use it for themselves and not give full closure to the general public about what's going on. So it's very, and I, and I had the conversation with him in 1999 about what happens when someone uses quantum grammar, uses quantum grammar, and they tell lies, mm. and he his answer was, "Well, you'd start a war over it." I said, "Yeah, but it's not about what I would do. It's about what were you gonna? Do? What are you doing about it?" And he wouldn't answer the question. So that was a tough thing, you know. That was my first real eye opener because you know you don't really know somebody until you're with them for quite a while. Sure. And I was with and I was with David from 1995 to um, till he died in 2018 with a lot of, you know, real tough love and tough things that had happened during that time frame, because, uh, you know, you have to do what you say in, in the now space. And and so I didn't really know, didn't really know him. And I'm a very forgiving person. I, I, I give people a chance, you know, I'm banking on mankind to do the correct thing. Especially yes. when no one's, especially when no one's looking, it's very easy to put money and put um, control in front of the concept that you're to to you know get yourself ahead in life. And I always made the choice to I can be content with where I'm at now, <laughs> and, it, and and so it's, it's a much different approach than what David took. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of corporate fights and we had corporate shareholder meetings. And I mean, it, you know, it's how corporations were set up. And when the one foot in the sea and the one foot in the land, when I came up with that concept uh, in uh, 2001, um, David, he he didn't quite under comprehend where I was going with that. And, uh, you know, to capture the land jurisdictions, I had to actually I took a five year study in in molecular structure of matter and i came out with my own periodic table and published it worldwide um went after the atomic clocks they would call it the atomic clocks in greenwich and all that corporate structure as well as the in your in your lands as mm -hmm. well as the um, international bureau of weights and measures to articulate i was the first person in the history of planet earth to articulate molecular structure in a now space control and so you, it was a, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say, could you just explain what you mean by the now space, particularly in terms of of contracts? Because you mentioned earlier that they were all written in, in future tense, I think you said. Yes, yeah. Just, well, they, just, to, just to help help those that are sort of new to all of this to, to comprehend what you what you're mean. Yeah, so when you look at syntax, and syntax is the, the order of operation of how words come together to create thoughts. 
Right. And so the contracts were using future tense connotations, which they would use the the word to, T-O, which now means to to put something in, into the future and the, or to uh, have something in the past or had something in the past, right? So, so they were moving the condition of sentence structure into two places at the same time. Uh, well, I see. Know, well, as you know, Richard, it's very difficult to be in two places at the same time. It certainly is with yes. one with one body you, with one with one space. Yes. yes. And so, when you look at the how set, sentences and these words come together, we looked at the uh, parse or the prefixes of words and the suffixes of words, and uh, we spent a couple, you know, I have over 300,000 hours of study time in, in words and in hieroglyphics of words. And I've studied other people's work. You know, there's a lot of people in a lot of different fields studying hieroglyphics and, you know, the Jordan Maxwell's of the world and all these great fluencers of the world that have done their own search. And I sort of value and look at what they've done because, you know, I'm only looking at order of operations of words in the shipping containment for banking and the control of uh, finances. Because that was the one thing that they used against the people was the control of money to say, oh, wait a minute, you've got to go to work or you've got to take a mortgage out or you've got to do all these things in order to have this or have that or, you know, to try to get ahead of life. And so when you look at how that all came to play, I, when you put it all in the now space, like I did for the quantum banking system, um, words meant what they said and said what they meant, so that brought accountability to the contract now. So you couldn't use subjective interpretation about how words were brought together. Like, if, if Richard, if you look on your clock right in front of you, right? Mm. And you see on your clock you have a colon between the numbers. Yes. Well, numbers are nouns, right? Numbers but are... If you, are nouns or facts. Are nouns, yes. Yes, they are. But if you were to take the colon out in front of your noun in front of you, in front of your number in front of you, which represents time with colon in it, you create confusion or what they call subjective interpretation, where you can you can have all kinds of concepts of now what those numbers mean, because now it moved the volition of time away from the fact. Right, because it you could just what... be, uh, I'm just looking at, see, so mine, because I'm in the UK and you're uh, in America, um, we're at two different time spaces, but mine says 1732. I would read that as half past five in the afternoon, but it Correct. could be 1732 something. If you took the colon The colon out. out, yes. Yes, and so that's why I use punctuation in my name, is because now it controls, because nouns and numbers are names, are, are, are nouns, are nouns. And, and names. The numbers and, and names are nouns, are facts. Yes. And so that's why I use the punctuation in my name at the beginning, because I'm claiming the noun to not allow subjective interpretation for people to now put a spin or now move you into the admiralty of trying to control what the value of that word means. Right. Yes, I see. So, um, I mean, we see that when when we get our bills here in the UK, and I dare say it's in, in other places as well, all in capitalization. And we've been learning that that actually is not really our name. It's hieroglyphics or it's something other than our name. Yes, it's a straw man based upon the birth certificate system. Mm. And the birth certificate system is is part of the corporate lives, right? This is part of this corporate structure. There's, you got to be born in a hospital and then they, then they issue a birth certificate. And that birth certificate, you know, has all these hieroglyphics and all these funny symbols on there. And then you have to take that in order to continue your voyages to go into the doctor or go into your elementary schools or your preschools. That is your, your shipping maritime contract to now identify yourself through this straw man system that's been put in place. And that straw man system, the ultimate patrolling arm is, is, is for your shipping, for your navigation. So what I did is I restructured that on planet Earth, disqualifying the head of the shipping organizations all over planet Earth planet earth such as uh the the international maritime organization for contracts the universal postal union in Bern, switzerland which is an umbrella corporations for all countries post offices who are in joinder with that uh concept and when i had my meetings at the universal postal union in 2003 i wrote a system that nobody could steal from me which was really fascinating how i approached that uh my, kind of my own sh surety policy 
that nobody could come in and act like me. You know, a lot of people have tried, but go in and act like me. Or somebody said, oh, well, you can replace Russell now. And so I, I set up like a, a living construct through these corporate shareholder meetings that we, we held. And there was three shareholders in the original construct and building of the quantum system. And that all, they got put into like a living trust or a living corporate policy that I've had to comply with because I'm bound to those guidelines, right? Because these are the guidelines that I concurred with when I built the quantum system. Right. And so when when I did that, you know, I locked myself into perform performances and just really staying at peace and neutrality with mankind. But in the same token, drawing a, a strict line on what I would allow into the now space of contract grammar and what I would not allow based upon, you know, the, the concepts of the shareholder meetings. And so once in 2006, we put that into like a perpetuity of corporate structure. And then at that point, uh, shareholders did what they did. And some shareholders had to vacate. Uh, David and the other gentleman had to vacate their shareholder position because of the performances that they conveyed did not commune or join with the corporate policies that were set. And so like, that's, that's why I came out with last flag standing because I was the last guy in control of the corporate charters that we had built on to help out mankind on grammar simultaneously also help them with the, get away from the financial system you know the quantum banking system that i have built actually dissolves banking on the planet it actually does away with it because there's such abundance here of wealth and i'm not talking paper wealth i'm talking or cyberspace wealth i'm talking actual tangible wealth and i, I developed a system where i can um, take matter and and put it back into itself and grow it so I wouldn't have to mine the earth so we could leave the earth alone. We right. wouldn't have to go. We wouldn't have so just, to go. So, so yeah. when you say that, just can you just uh, uh, um, go on a bit more about that? You've, you've designed a system so that you can take matter and. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I created a, 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 well, a study in the labs, right? So I, I spent hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of hours in actual labs working, figuring this stuff out. Um, and I built a system, and we have in our country what's called the fumbling, bumbling idiots. You probably know them as the FBI, and they were buying all, <laughs> they were buying all my medals from me, right? So that's 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 you know way back when. And I and I you know unfortunately when I was in the quantum grammar, I was approached by the top metal cartels around the world because I had disqualified all the hall hallmarking, which are the symbolisms and, and of grammar that was on all metals on the planet they were right like, when they yeah. stamp your silver or your gold yes and so when i was at the vatican and doing things over there i did away with their ability to do rituals and ceremonies to create that those ideologies and policies for um, um hallmarking metals and so uh you know i of course when i did that the metal cartels and the top scientists from different countries russia you know, Israel, Germany, Horaeus and all them, they they would come into my labs and work with me, their top scientists, just to monitor what I was doing, seeing, to verify, number one, that I had the knowledge, and number two, that I could actually perform, you know, the grammar while I was doing it. So everything was written in a, in a now space of grammar, and I created a system where I could create these hermaphrodites, which are both lecton donors and givers simultaneously. And then I developed a system, um, I don't want to say the words, but through, through um, I could say electricity, through electricity, uh, where I could stabilize molecular matter and then those electron shells would, would gain mass. And then I, could, right. stab then I, then I could stabilize them. Yeah. And so this is what, and so I'm like, but it's very difficult. Richard, would you open a bank with a bunch of criminals running around? No, of course, <laughs> it's, no. It's it kind of difficult to give to the world right now because you got too many criminals running around. People are like, why? Well, you know, I hold public auctions, like I'll hold a confab or a workshop, and I'll have an auction, an auction, and I'll auction off my medals. My people, people come in, claimants with claims of life, come into my to my meetings, and uh, we have auctioneers there, and and then they take those medals and they use them for like uh, filing fees and courts, you know, because I I 
run the court systems worldwide because of the grammar, because the clerk of court works through for the port authority and the port authorities uh, work through the Department of Transportation, who works for the post office of that country. And that post office of that country works for the Universal Postal Union. And I'm a trust within that of grammar, a private trust to control the, the now space. And so I sat down with the top heads at the Universal Postal Union in Bern, Switzerland in 2003 and had a four hour meeting with them discussing um, all of the um, all of the concepts of what I'm you know sharing here with you about changing the world and putting putting the, the wealth back into the people and the technologies back into the people and it's uh, there's wonderful people all over the world and you know there's probably people smarter than I right for sure uh, I don't claim to be the smartest guy, but I know what I've created and I know what I've designed for the people, but it's very difficult to give out to the world and because I want the quantum system is about accountability, accountability and neutrality. Mm. Where And so everybody gets to be their own judge and get to judge themselves. And so you've got to be very careful on what you let come out of yourself. Right. Because then you can you you have to judge yourself and you, this technology is a two edged sword. Right? You lock yourself up with it. Yeah. Or you, no. or you can be free and navigate. So it's a double edged sword here for neutrality, accountability, peacefulness, full closure, transparency, but also gives privacy. Because I believe that uh, for me, being a very private person, I, I I've put real value in privacy um, and though you have to have some sorts of transparency if it when necessary but because of the quantum banking system that i designed it's not credit and debit because of abundance literally i mean i can look outside here and i and you know, like on that little tiny hillside right there you know there's enough wealth to you know feed small countries so right so so with all this stuff that you've been doing that there must be, as we know, that plenty of bad players out there who are making money from the old systems, who probably are not very keen on you sharing all this wonderful knowledge and letting people be free and uh, taking responsibility for themselves, becoming their own bankers and what have you. Um, yeah. Have you found it um, that you you are? Um, well, how can I put this? A, a wanted man by certain people. I am a very watched man, right? I'm very monitored. And so I have to have a lot of wrong leading directions as I do things. And, you know, unfortunately for me, I've, I've with the laws of attraction and what I've created, it's, it's brought in the most nefarious people in the world. And, you know, the, they are, you know, the shadow ban, everything I do. And I, I'm very difficult to find out there for sure. Um, but the people that come and use my technologies and use my monies to do, you know, bond their businesses, you know, because everything in these, mar on these maritime contracts has, you know, a lot of different functions. As you know, we call that the quanta, which is the pluralisms for insurance, for manifest, for, you know, what you're doing for business, for privacy, for shareholders, for minutes. I mean, it's it, it's a it's a convoluted thing. And then yet keeping one foot on the maritime contract and one foot on the land is the uh, the real key. So you can control the navigation of the shipping construct on your bills of the ladings, which is like your um, your your claim of the goods right? You're on your manifest. And so these are things that uh, I teach people you know on a s slow level you know I, it's a, it's been a slow burn for sure and mm. because of the the government's you know the, the my main people that are, are that do business with me are undercover agents right for different agencies oh uh, yeah right. for like like in our country we have what's called the national security agency so like all my labs will get raided and the fumbling bumbling idiots will come in and steal all the tech and then as they're leaving, the helicopters come in from the from the military side and grab all from them and then return all my stuff to me. Oh. Right. But it's but it's a pain in the butt to go through. Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, right. of course. It's, it sounds yeah, like a it, cat and mouse game. It's a it's a total slow you down game, total, you know, get them in position to and you know, the the world, quite frankly, I don't know if they really want to be countable for their actions. Mm. Right? Because countability does Requires work 
from within. Right? And you have to look at yourself. Yes. And, and then you have to be able to make choices and you win and lose by how you choose. Right. So if you're choosing to be uh, nefarious, this is not the right system for you because you're going to no. lock it. You're going to lock yourself up if you're a thief or if you try to steal something. Eventually, the now space will catch up to you and you can't fake it. You can't fake being a leader. You can't fake being honest or truthful. And and, and so what I have found is that if you if you just leave that energy, that that energy and that spirit of of full closure, transparency and honesty, that it, the traction comes to you. And, you know, the world's learning about me. I'm very thankful for that. But I I have built a system that I have to live by policies. And then I also have to get out of everybody's way because I'm not going to judge anyone. I'm not going to tell people what to do. That's not what I built. I built a system to people have to be accountable and they get to tell themselves what to do. <laughs> Because my job is not to judge people. My job is to be accountable to myself, accountable to the those I'm in contract with, and accountable to, to my loved ones and you know my creator and and, and 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 that sort of thing. But I'm not pushing ideologies of faith or religion upon anyone. I I, ch I have chosen not to make that journey. A lot of influencers try to pin me into positions of this and that of religious sex, and when you look at the journey of all the corporate lies, right? <laughs> like in our country called America, or the former United States of America, which ended in 1999, you know, you, are you going to tell me that a bunch of cowboys with wagons built the civilizations and the structures that were here from a long, long time ago? I don't think so. Mm. Right. So this is an old story. I mean, if you look at some of the things that are out there and you do your own searching on the Sumerians or the Tartarians or all these different civilizations, the green tablets, all these things that were in function. What I did, which is so unique, is I claimed it all in the now space or my space or our space if you join, right? Or if you- I was gonna say my space, is, my space has sort of uh, connotations from, um, who was it who came up with my space in the old days? Sorry. Uh, yeah. But some yeah. of those, cor those corporate names still hover around, don't they? They sure do. And you know, and that's all the corporate life because those corporations are a, a, is a, is a, is a bailment shipping containment where they allow contracts or vendors to come in and out of that vendees yeah. and 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 then upon that there's bailments and there's timelines and there's administrative mechanics which are your maritime functions and then when there's strife or negotiation there's shareholders that now function in an admiralty of those corporations that now you know adhere to the judicial systems which is now the, the postage stamps to the file stamps on contracts and those file stamps are postage stamps. And so if you're divorced in the UK and you show up in Seattle, Washington, you're still divorced because it's all a one world order of shipping containment. And once you comprehend that this is a shipping containment and then you have the right to, or the capacity to step out of a system that is not here legally or lawfully, but is merely a rogue element Thwarting our abilities to have a moral compass, uh, as well as a value of direction with all the wrong leading statements and the fake news and all the things and the gaslighting that is occurring all over the world. Mm. And unfortunately, the, the, the wars and this concept that we have to hate each other over faith and, and, and religions and all these different ideologies. If you don't believe like us, we're going to kill you. And, you know, everybody's doing it. That's one of the things that... Uh, Unfortunately, when I was at the Vatican dealing with the Catholic Cardinals, um, they they were very excited about the never ending wars. That was were one of they? their bread. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That was one of their major excitements is that we have this concepts of this faith and this faith and they hate each other. And man, we can make a lot of money off of this. I mean, it was really I mean, I had a really fascinating conversation. I was over there for four days, three days with them and then one day by myself just kind of you know learning about the the layout and, and the things that were over what there. an insight then 
Yeah, it was very uh, fascinating. I, I sat down with the Secretary of State's office, and because I had actually mailed myself over there through my shipping containment uh, without a passport, without any fiction paperwork, using a what I call a mirror hyphen tree, M I R R O R, and uh, that was my picture ID. Right? They said, Where are you? Where's your ID? And I okay. hold up my mirror and I'd be like, There I am. Right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, I figured things out. And uh, when I sat down with the Secretary of State's office, they actually had to vacate the offices and, because they didn't have any now space jurisdiction. And they wouldn't allow David in because he didn't have any, because he was under contract with bad people. And I, you know, I didn't know at the time. Right. Yeah. But, you know, and you're you're looking for correctness. You're being a friend to everybody, you know. And that's one of the things I, uh, when I went over there, you know, I I I actually used the English military, the British uh, Royal Navy, and ordered their admirals into the Sea of Space to make sure I was safe. And they met me down on the Mediterranean. And that was those were fascinating adventures because the post offices of the world control the country's militaries. Because before you go into the military, you have to go to the post office first in every country to get your military id number so you could go fight the military postal wars right. and so this is yeah so this is a this is a shipping war and i i was blessed enough that doors would open and i would get through i i uh, spent uh, three hours with the head of the united nations postal administrations uh robert gray and he told me that the united nations is a fraudulent organization that has zero authorization to do anything because they can't read and write and so it was pretty fascinating conversations. Uh, they brought in their entourages and took pictures of me with him and, you know, did, did a bunch of stuff like that at one UN Plaza. But, you know, these are things, ventures that I, I have found to be, uh, you know, more of the lies, you know, the United Nations, the NGOs and all the things that they're doing to undermine countries and, you know, really break down and create this um, um, this transhumanist society that where they really mm. want to move, where they really want to are taking this thing. Um, I've spoken to the, uh, you know, I, mean, I could go off on tangents forever on, on, on where people and things. And so, so just looking at world events where we are and on and things like this, as you mentioned, transhumanism and and all the sort of things that are going on. Uh, where do you think we are going? Uh, can we get out of this back to a, a more human? Um, n- genuine you know nice let's just use a horrible word like nice a, a simple place where we you know from our heart we're back in into uh non-nefarious corporate situations well you said something very key there and that was in our heart mm. and so we really have to cover what that what our hearts are doing do we still have the capacity to love to forgive to show grace when you need to show grace, to sometimes sacrifice, to sometimes, you know, sit and listen a little more. That's going to be on mankind to figure out how to communicate. So what I've done is I've looked at, it's one thing to sit down. It's another thing to figure out the voyage which we want to put the corporate structures on. Mm. So Mm. I challenge the world to look at the now space as a different scenario to bring accountability so corporations are bound to perform for the people if that's what they're doing if it's a performance for the people or if the corporations you know on a on a trade position where they're trading goods and ser- for services that they're tendering or you know but some of the services that they're tendering out here of course like you were saying the, the nanotech and the things with the transhumanist functions They are definitely looking, but I think it would be very unwise to have everyone go in that direction because then you would really lose some of the ground roots of who we are as as spiritual beings here. Because now, are you now a spiritual being with the, or is a AI system controlling the consciousness within you or the synapses within you, Mm. which now created creating? So it's a very slippery road. I feel that. Some of the technology would be wonderful on the medical application for quadriplegics and, and helping those that uh, have heart problems and all these things. You know, you could definitely use it, but don't use it to where 
who's controlling the airwaves going into those people. Yes. Right? We have to really check where their minds and hearts are. And that's the beauty of the now space. Because when you crack the harness of time, and there is no more time in your space, then you can take time to put things into neutral or what they call zero point. And in that zero point function, you can now look at things and ask the tough questions. Well, why are we doing this? How is this being done, number one? And then why is this being done? That way, the general public has a transparency position to where they can vote it in or not vote it in. Right? Because ultimately, the services are for the aid of the people. Governments are for the aid of the people. But you, well, you should would not hope be, so. You would hope so. But unfortunately, they're using the hydrocarbons against us, mm. holding, the, holding the energies and suppressing, saying, well, you have to now go to work and be a slave to pay for the energy to heat yourself or the, the, all these you know the things that we need to survive as a as a species at this point, but uh, but if you're a transhumanist and you're a robot, do you need those things anymore? Do you mm. need food? Do you need food to survive? Or is the electrolysis synapse in your system and cr- controlling your mitochondrial system to to now maybe you can just rest, or maybe you can continue to work forever? and never have to stop working with the robots and all the things that they're trying to bring in. So to answer your question, it's going to be up to the heart and bringing good minds together. And then, you know, what I've done is I've created a different jurisdiction called the now space. And if people would like to have their concepts in the now space, well, that's a whole different conversation because Mm. the contracts that they're writing now, all our future tense and past tense and negative prefixes and suffixes moving you out of time and space. So when you look at the quantum entanglements of the now space and how to control that vacuum of what I call bingo, right? Free space, B-I-N-G-O, you know, you play the game bingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Capture the free space, capture the free space. What does that really mean, right? So you have to look at what I did with my periodic tables is looked at the magnetic flux of what that would be because the magnetism is a constant. These are things that I've, articulated in, in you know in, in safeguarding myself and as being chief judge at the world court at the hague and the other places is i've had these conversations with them about the that the magnetism yes i can concur that it's magnetic flux but our minds must perceive it and see it in motion this is where the fiction judges say verb as jurisdiction because everything's in motion but without the mind to perceive that and freeze frame it as a movement in our minds we don't, we don't, uh, this is what gives the jurisdiction of the fact over the thick, over the verb. Because if you don't, if you can't comprehend, the first rule of contract is knowledge and comprehension. Once you have knowledge and comprehension, then we can all agree that yes, the magnetism or the vacuum of that space is in flux, but we're perceiving it as a fact. Therefore, the fact is jurisdiction over the verb. And right. that's always been, that's always been yeah. you know, with me because I've been in the courts and all over the world in the court systems. What has jurisdiction here? The the magnetism, or the or the fact, right? And the the, the fiction judges in, in, in the fiction court systems and the corporate the courtrooms around the world will all tell you that, that the verb has jurisdiction here, and they'll they'll tell you we're going to use verbs, adjectives, and pronouns, and adverbs to modify our facts to create anything but a noun or a fact, because with second you have facts on the table and you crack that yoke of time, and you're looking at things for what they are. Now you could get a real perspective on the condition of the heart, the condition of the mind. Why why are we going to allow this transportation to happen in this shipping containment that we're all in? And so it gives a chance, the quantum position, to set up a neutral platform to allow others to join with. And, and then you can see where it'd be very difficult to steal that, right? It'd be very difficult to come in after the fact and make all these claims that you're this and you're that when you have weren't in the function of setting it up. So this is about giving, doing away with a lot of tomfoolery of theft and a lot of tomfoolery of, uh, you know, if people break contract, then you can put that in the terms of the contract so everybody has transparency of what, what happens if they don't do contract. That way you don't need your, and just start carpet bombing countries Right, and, and mm. destroying and destroying innocent lives. Only a fool goes to war. Yes, a fool a fool will go to war because he doesn't know how to communicate and control his thoughts or his actions in the now space. So once you break that concept of war, 
and you look at the neutrality of wait a minute before we go start dropping bombs on people what wait a minute let's create a platform and a forum where everybody can come in in neutral and now what are people's needs right and we'll find and i find and i found when i travel the world that most people's needs are based upon this concept of fairness and money right because we're being starved out or we, or they're using the the wars of siege which is an old feudalistic system where they use the food as a weapon against us they allow right. turn turn power off turn water off doing all all the hydrocarbon wars right all this that's why i built the periodic tables so that they can't use those hydrocarbons and i put the electron spin in the quantum periodic tables into a positive spin I met with the head of MIT's NSA Department of Defense when I, and Department of Energy here in the United States. Uh, within 72 hours, the uh, CIA and the NSA pulled me off the streets when I published that in 2005 because of the ramification of not using the hard hydrocarbons as a weapon. And so, you know, these are things that I'm trying to share to the world. And as you can see, these are very difficult concepts for people to, number one, have the capacity to comprehend because we're so geared to turn on our 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 you know social engineering and you know i'm a part of it too because i'm in social engineering as well because i'm trying to share people that we don't really need to do this and really look at the grassroots of you know undoing the genetically modified fields and one of the really bad things that you know unfortunately that just happened in my creating the, the hermaphroditic system and being raided by the fumbling, bumbling idiots here in the States, the bad guys figured out what I was doing. And so they gave all the technology to Monsanto and Monsanto bought all the stockpiles up around the world because nobody knew what it was. Nobody knew how to do anything with this stuff. Right. It was everybody's trash is what I was using. And so they, they, Monsanto bought it all up around the world, and now they use the tech that I've created. And that's what's being used, of course, on these borders and stuff is because I, I, I did. It's not what I meant to do. I meant to create a shipping containment for accountability. But but once the birth certificate system being gone and the borders being in fiction grammar under the postal guys, right? And when I took out the postal charters, do you think that there's borders anymore? Well, I'm guessing not. Yeah, this is yeah. What, it's not. I was I built a system for accountability, and so they used the tech against the people, shadow ban, and make sure I'm not on the airways, so nobody actually comprehends. Because you're a very comprehensive guy, you're tracking what I'm saying. Right? Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying yeah. to. I mean, you, you you know that you're you're using a lot of terms which are completely new to me, and so I'm. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. It, no, no, yeah. no, no. I mean, it's 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 your lingo, isn't it? Uh, and it's your you you've been with it for so long. So I'm I'm, it's you know when you it's like a new language. You're just trying to sort of interpret as much as you can yeah, in, trying to into a, into an old language and going. Oh yeah, and I get you know I'm still I'm still trying to understand the now space um, concept. Yes, it's a totally different. So, like in our contracts for claiming land, or mm. or in a mortgage, they'll use the suffix "ed" at the end of these words, like "amended." Yes, right. But "ed" means to put you into past tense. So, what happens to the contract? So oh, it's, it's a valid, contract it's valid in the in past the tense. Yes, yeah, there's no now time jurisdiction to in, to for the enforcement of the terms of contract. So that's how they weasel out of it. That's how they weasel uh, been. That's how they've been weaseling out of it. Yeah. So if they want to, yeah. It's yeah. Like, well, well it's, a, it's a contract in the past. Correct. So it has no jurisdiction now. So I can continue to do what I'm doing now because you can't force it because I didn't say nothing because it's all in the past. Right. So if you well, what would you what would be an example of a now space contract if you were like you said instead of being in the past with ed on the back yes yeah, so what we do in order to establish that we take it back to the nativity of these maritime contracts with what we call the claim of the life contract and now we claim our lives to be have life in the now space that we comprehend that this is a corporate function of shipping and we have all the maritime hieroglyphics on the contract, such as a flag, 
because the law of the flag is relevant. And if for your audience, if you want to learn more about that, you could go to lastflagstanding.com and watch the documentary. I give a pretty comprehensive closure on how the law of the flag is used to navigate through the, the millenniums of time. Before it was not flags, it was symbolisms of, of spiritual uh, conviction sometimes. It was, it was, tri it was tribal and um, um, handed down ancestry, like uh, if you do a lot of uh, studying like in the Kaushik records and, and cleaning up our spiritual consciousness of cosmic coming to the oneness here, um, you'll find that when you clean that out for yourself, that your space actually becomes quite peaceful. And, uh, you know, these are things that, you know, the general public is, you know, part of the lies that we're not taught. Mm. Uh, we should be all, we should all be taught the administrative functions in, in junior high and elementary so that we know what we're walking into when we get to get out of schools, like the other school systems. And there's, the school systems are not, nothing more than an engineering program to tell us what to think, how to think, uh, and the type of words that they want us to use. So looking at the, the prefixes and suffixes of these words, back to this, because this is very important. If you're using verbiage on your contracts that you move you out of the now space, and maybe put you into the future tense with the adverbs to, or you modify your words with adverbs, creating verbs. So like you say, country of England, country is a pronoun, of is an adverb because it lacks the prepositional phrase, and now England becomes a verb. Could you show me the geographic verb location England anywhere in the world? Oh, I see, because it's no longer a noun, a thing. It's no longer a fact. No longer therefore, a fact. That, therefore, if you're in contract with it, do, do you think they have to give you any facts? Right. Oh, okay. So now they can modify, engage in all kinds of nefarious games because the condition of the spirit behind them knows what this is, right? There's, there's been no... I have not blurred the lines there. I've been very upfront and very honest with the world that this is happening. And when you create a modification, now you've just modified, your, allowed something else to modify your life. Now you're not in control of that space or your space or my space or, you know, mm. I don't want to, I don't want to generalize because generalization will get you nowhere. You need to be more specific and pointed on right. what, we're, what we're talking about. And I myself have to, I have to correct myself too, Richard. I mean, yes. I, you know, I, well, well, that's it. It just, how it, long it just, how long did it take you to create this um, understanding of the the grammar that you do the now space grammar? It it so I started that voyage in 1995, and by the time that I wrote a bunch of dictionaries and did everything in the quantum grammar study, I've got my hands on all kinds of old dictionaries from the 1400s, 13 all the way through the centuries, and by the time I was really really good is when I completed the quantum banking system in 2001. What I was doing, I was I was working with the wrong people, being my ex-business partner, David Ivan Colin Miller, and we were going into the, the, the places to educate and give that technology to the people that are now using that against our fellow mankind. So that was, you know, and that's where I've done my best to stop and correct but it's very difficult when you get shadow banned and all the things mm, that are, yeah, you, no, of you know course. what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So, so, so it's, it's been a long process and how, how it has people accepted the now space grammar? Oh, for, for me in my now space, it's very peaceful, mm. very, very good. I can go into any courtroom anywhere and they know, it's, you know, of course they get knee jerk reaction and get really, really crazy and dumb when I get there. You know, I've been escorted out by lots of SWAT teams and I mean, you, you, you can't, mm. Can't imagine the world that I've, I've had to come through, uh, but for me, it's uh, very peaceful. It's because you're accountable for your performances, and uh, in in my lands over here, you know, there's good and bad in every every race, and there's good and bad yes. in every cor corporation. Um, if the people are not very cautious here about what they're allowing to happen, because there's you got to understand. Society pretty much lacks what we call, what I call, uh, testicular fortitude, lack of guts, lack of courage. Right. And uh, in the lack of courage, and because everybody, sovereignty is 
you're 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 the creator you're the you're the controller the creator of your world which means you're not counting on anyone else right yes. there's no one and there's no one coming to help you mm. so you have to create the paradigm so you got to be careful when you're saying sovereignty and you would never want to call yourself a sovereign citizen because no. sovereign is the power of one and citizen is corporate so it's an it's yes. a trap it's an oxymoron it, it, i was going to say yeah absolutely yeah. yeah so so the the system will try to call you if you come in a sovereign citizen you have to like i like i like in my country i look at the u.s marshals i go are you a weeping idiot are you telling me that i'm a power of one and a corporate at the same you know yeah so you you have that yes and absolutely put their heads down yeah people can find out more about you and what you do in your uh the now space on uh last flag com. is that correct lastflagstanding.com and piercingdynasty.com and if they want to join and learn a lot more about joining the system you would go to for for the claim of the lot for the claim of the life.com that's for the claim of the life.com and that will get you into the, the the joining the system and then recorrecting the usuries we touched on that briefly earlier the yeah. usuries would be like your driver's license see i'm not trying to i'm just correcting a system so i'm creating a juxtaposition because you're allowed dual citizenship and the fact always has jurisdiction over the the fiction because the fiction doesn't exist because they can't prove anything because of the grammar. Right. Yes. And so what we do is we go in and we clean up people's usuries to create a juxtaposition to create a neutral platform. So now that they can open up their their what we call a market trade port, they can open up their own business venture that now gives them control of how they go in and tell those that they're in contract with how the, the new terms are going to be. And it's really simple. Richard, did you have the same education that you had when you were in high school to now? Did I have the same education? Well, I left school at 15, so um, I'm very uneducated. The education I've got mainly is from my own reading books and, and Correct. Do, Correct. doing my own stuff, really. Yeah, and so it changes as we, as, as we move through space. And as that education changes, that is your authorization to stop and correct because people don't know that they're using things as verbs. They don't right. know that they're moving themselves out of now space. No, they don't know no. about this syntax. And they've never heard these words parse and to, to break words down and really look at the root words of what we're using. And when we look at some of the, like a, I look at some of the gematria and some of the different functions out there when it comes to alphabets and stuff, I look at it a little bit different because I with my periodic tables, I, I claimed the, you know, the structure form of, of symbols being characters, hier hieroglyphics of letters in some alphabets, you know, some alphabets like didn't have the word or the letter J for, you know, for centuries. And then they added J later, you know, so you have to look at the, the sort of the angle of the dangle and uh, people have gone very extreme with the, you know, with the, uh, with the resonance program that, you know, if you come in at a certain angle, you know, you, you, there's a lot of wonderful, brilliant minds out there that are thinking about those terms. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the shipping containment of how to control our now space. So we're not servitude of a rogue lying system because the whole thing's a scrapped out lie. Yes. Government, governmentally wise. And they're going to continue to get, a, they're continuing to get away with it because the people of the world can't come together because we're too busy fighting and trying to survive on the fast wars that are coming at us, the slow wars that are really destroying us with the, the medical tyrannies and the, and the food tyrannies and the water tyrannies and the, uh, the spatial technologies that are being used against us to nanotech our lives to death. And I mean, mm. it's a very, very sad thing. It is, it is a very uh, difficult time at the moment. Do you think we'll pull through it all? I do. I do. I, 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 I count on mankind. You know, I, I count on myself to be a very positive person and, and I'm a manifesting positive performances. And in my space and with my people that are working with in my system, a lot of them are starting to be left alone. 
they're starting to figure it out. Everybody's on their own journey and their own comprehension level. And, you know, if you're going to be sovereign, you have to do it for yourself. You can't have someone else, you know, tell you about it. And then, then, then you, then all of a sudden it's a magic pill for you as it could be that way if it wasn't so nefarious in the government structures, but because it's so nefarious in the government structures, they're going to challenge, you know, they challenge things and, uh, you know, they challenge people's. And I really, the main thing, Richard, that I see really lacking out here is people's capacity to do due diligence before they enter into contract. Mm. Do, do, do your due diligence, really find out who you're talking to before you enter into contract with people because you might not want to do contract with them. And the other thing is, is would you make the same choice if you had full pockets? Ah, uh, yes. You, Very good. Yeah, same? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Would you make the same choice? Absolutely. Um, Russell, it's been a joy to talk to you. Some of it's gone over my head, I have to confess. Um, I, it's, a, it's, you know, it's an understanding of something that we've all been put into this sort of narrow band and you're, you know, you're, you're well out of that. And, and um, I think that we all need to sort of come out of the confinement that we have been programmed into, haven't we? And, and well, free yeah, ourselves. Well- for yourselves and love yourselves and love others and be kind to others. Never let anyone tell you who to hate. No, quite. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking to us and explaining what you do and how it all works and more power to you. And uh, power hopefully... To the power and to the people. Don't worry power about the, power to well, me. The power right. to the people, pa- bro. Power to the people. Exactly. So there we go. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Fascinating and uh, interesting conversation with, uh, let me get this right, Russell hyphen J colon Gould. Um, Yes, sir. But but Russell to me, which was lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you for, and thank your audience for taking the time of their their busy day space. Thank you so much. Um, I'll be back with more monologues and, of course, more wonderful and fascinating guests. But until then, from Russell and myself, thank you so much for watching. Till next time, goodbye. Blessings.